Hey everyone, it is Kate Johnson. It is Thursday afternoon, September 10th. We are here with this new friend of mine. I've gotten to know him over the last couple months, John Garrett. Welcome, John. Hey, thank you so much for having me. I'm excited. This is going to be awesome. Yeah. Um, so welcome to the Bookkeeping Side Hustle group. I know you uh, just recently joined my group. Um, right. We're, we're a special place here. Um, a yeah. lot of bootstrappy, hustly kind of folks. Um, Those are my people. That's for sure. I'm, I'm the same way. <laughs> some, sure. some of us are a little rough around the edges, mostly myself. Um, I, but I, I think everyone's rough around the edges if they're <laughs> being honest with themselves. Yeah. So uh, yeah, totally. Well, um, we got this interview scheduled um, because, um, well, we met I don't even know how. Somehow, this is the, the power of social media, guys. If you just, yeah. you know, they always talk to us about like sort of being active and somehow, don't even remember how I got connected. I think it was Aaron John. Kidd, maybe. Aaron yes. Kidd, maybe. Okay, Aaron us, Kidd. Who's is, also a member of the group. Yes. Yeah. Um, she was on your podcast and then right. little old me got on your podcast and I talked a about absolutely. my church. I, I direct a little church choir and then yeah. I know I've, uh, introduced i know I, I told michael lee that about you and i've kind of done right. my own like networking help yeah. as much as i can and then i know now you're you've written a book and that's what we're here to yeah. talk about yeah i um, know thank you so much and you've read it which is awesome got you an I, advanced reader I, copy i have yeah. read it i um and so yeah hey guys so i'm gonna hold him up here he actually sent me three copies because well, I'm a little bit difficult, and so I don't want just one. I said I want you to give me three, <laughs> and, um, but we're going to give them away. Yeah, we're going to give them away. I'm, I'm going to keep the one I've read, but then um, on Tuesday is the book launch, right? Is it Tuesday? Right. Yeah, so Tuesday. Tuesday. I have two that I will mail, and then on Tuesday, I'm going to actually buy a book, and I'll send that third copy to a winner. So to win the book, I see Kristen has been the first to chime in. Anyone watching, if you chime in, but this time it's a little different. You need to tell us your and. Now, the quick version is your and is kind of like your passion, but we're going to get in more into it with John about yeah. what the heck is, what's your and. Um, right. There you go. Yeah. And pre-orders are available now. So if people oh, are like, okay, okay, you don't have cool. to wait till Tuesday, you can pre-order now and then Amazon will ship it on and Tuesday. And it'll ship. Got it. Exactly. Got it. Kindle version, uh, paperback. Yeah, Absolutely. Perfect. So, uh, so that's awesome. Yeah, yeah, and if you put your name in the hat, and the winners will also get a copy of my ebook. There's the cover of the bookkeeping side hustle guidebook. Um, I always like to throw that in because it's easy just to email someone. Totally, um, that's awesome. But, yeah. yeah. So, guys, um, besides the fact that you know John is uh, has a good information, and I wanted to help him out. Um, you know, I'm not just gonna like let anyone come and talk and ask how to listen. I actually think oh, no. that John has some stuff that are going to help us new bookkeeping entrepreneurs um, apply to our, our uh, we can apply to our business. And so we're going to start, John's going to give us his background and all that, but I do hope you continue to stay tuned because I'm going to push him to say he's been thinking about this stuff a lot longer than a lot of us have, for sure for me. Right. Um, and I, I need advice and you'll get to hear him give me advice and we'll get him to give y'all advice. I mean, a lot of us need the same advice, but you can ask any question as well. I got the, the comments feed up here on the, the right. So I'll be able to listen. Um, and uh, as a matter of fact, I'm going to bring it up as well, just so okay. I can see also. So uh, yeah, no, that's, uh, that's fantastic. All right. Yeah. All right. So I got, so I'm going to call it got cat listening right here and she says she wants to help many small businesses as possible to thrive and grow cat. That is not your and that is like your, that's the opposite. Your like business. That's, that's like, right? boring. you got to like tell us, <laughs> I know, I know the scout cat. So I know that she's got a lot of ands. She's got like, aren't you yeah. into like, um, like, um, the graphic stuff that you draw, you know, like the anime stuff, right? Sorry, Kat, I'm totally butchering it because I'm not into the stuff you're into. Yeah. I've, anyway, your aunt, John, what is, what, what do you Yeah, why don't we start with aunt? that and that'll yeah. make it easier for people so then they, yeah. can, uh, they can do that. So yeah, so, uh, you know, absolutely. I mean, what's your and is uh, you're a bookkeeper and something else. Okay. Uh, a cyclist, a painter, uh, a horror movie watcher, a concert goer, a runner. Okay. Uh, what is it that is outside of work that you're really interested in and passionate about? Uh, there's okay. other dimensions to who you are as a person besides debits on the left, credits on the right. 
Like there's other parts to who you are than knowing how to do a cash flow statement, which if you do, you're a genius. Cause I never learned that when I was at school. So good for you. <laughs> but you know, it's, it's what, what are those things that, that are, that really light you up? And sometimes it's your work, but sometimes it's not. But when you're talking about your passion, when you're talking about your church choir, yep. I mean, you're always excited. Always. I am. When you're talking about bookkeeping, ah, sometimes you're excited, but sometimes yeah. it sucks. And yeah. uh, that's just, and, and it's just being honest, you know, with ourselves and that we're, we work so we can live. Uh, and uh, there's a Venn diagram in the book of two circles uh, that overlap and there's things that you love to do. And then there's things that you get paid to do. And sometimes they overlap, but uh, sometimes they don't. And you get paid to do things that you don't necessarily love to do. And then there's things that you love to do that you don't get paid for. And that's totally fine. And it should, it's the way it should be, actually. It makes you a better professional, as the research has shown. So, so yeah. yeah. So the research, meaning like you're not just like telling yarns of tales. Like you've spent a lot of time like specifically studying this. You've kind of developed a, yeah. a, a career, a, a sort of second, you are a, regular old accountants and a big firm but you there's no regular old accountant they're <laughs> all awesome kate They're all, all awesome. of them <laughs> you are an awesome former actual practicing accountant but yes. you've, you've you've taken the time to like apply the and do your own research on the kind of yeah. the psychology the organizational behavior stuff that some people like are professors in and you've, you've done your own study to right. figure out that this actually is true and meaningful and it, it, yeah. it affects the work environment, that sort of thing. Yeah, absolutely. Done my own research. It's surveyed over uh, almost a thousand people, uh, interviewed over 400 people, some for the podcast, some not, uh, as well as dovetailed that with research from Duke University that okay. shows that if you have multiple dimensions to who you are, uh, then you're less prone to anxiety and depression. Uh, which is huge. Uh, so basically, imagine if all your life was bookkeeping. So right. all you did was bookkeeping, all you talked about was bookkeeping, all you breathed was bookkeeping, more bookkeeping, you, you ate dinner and then you did more bookkeeping like seven days a week, like just nothing but bookkeeping. See, Sounds even terrible. your face is like, Sounds what the terrible. hell? <laughs> well, because I mean, but that's how people think is I need to work more and I need to put more hours in and I need to be more dedicated to my career. And you're dedicated enough, like you're dedicated to it. And so if, if, a, if a client, you put in a proposal to a client and you're waiting to hear back from that client, your anxiety is through the roof because everything that you identify as hinges on them picking you. And then if they don't pick you, that's a 100% blow to the face. I mean, that's it. anxiety and depression kicks in. You spiral out of control. But if you uh, teach kids in a youth choir, or if you have a family, or if you have friends, or if you have faith, or if you have other interests, then yeah, sure, that stings a little bit. But there's another 85% of who I am as a person that, uh, that that's where I get confidence. That's who I am. And, and that, that I'll be okay. Okay. All right. We got some ands here. We've got Joanna is a traveler. Rick Steves, there we go. Rick Steves has her dream job. A cat. Sorry, yeah. I totally butchered your sci-fi. Is she's really into sci-fi, but also a vocalist, recreationist. Okay. Uh, mom, wife, avid reader. Kristen is a crochet lady. Uh, wow. A there you go. Travel, a, a budget okay. slash Excel nerd, and a travel yeah. adventurer. Um, yeah. So we got some. If it, please chime in with some more ands, y'all. Um, we're bookkeepers yeah. and. Something else. Um, yeah, on right. my interview with John, I was I talked about how I direct a small children's choir at my church. Uh, John, what's your and? Yeah, my and college football and ice cream. Uh, college football and, and ice cream. And comedy, of course, just yeah. coming from that background as well. But uh, yeah, college football, definitely. All right. So we're giving away three of these books for everyone who comments about what's their and. John, tell us about, uh, just give us the details about it, how we can buy it, and then we're going oh. to dive in into yeah. some of the stuff I've pulled out that I think will be really helpful for this group that we can apply to our actual businesses. So yeah, sure, absolutely. You, I mean, everyone can just go to whatsyourand.com. Uh, half the page is the podcast, so you can see that. And then okay. uh, the other half of the page is about the book and a link there uh, to pre-order off Amazon right now. And uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I just appreciate it. Uh, and, cool. and it definitely applies to everyone in this group because, uh, you know, how do you differentiate yourself 
as a bookkeeper. Um, you know, you tell somebody that you're just the best uh, bookkeeper on the planet. And it's like, well, that's what everyone's going to say. And what defines best? I mean, you know, there's what's best to you, Kate, isn't best to me. Right. Uh, you know, like somebody here says that they're a Nebraska college, uh, Nebraska Huskers fan. Well, that is not the best. So uh, <laughs> that's easy. That's an easy one. <laughs> I'm just kidding, Kristen. But uh, they're not even no. playing football this year. <laughs> right. Ding, ding, ding. No oh, name is. Notre nice Dame is. Baylor oh, is. <laughs> Baylor is. Yeah, there you go. So, uh, so see, it's, uh, but that's a perfect example of what do you think's best? And yeah. uh, so we, but what's different is you like Baylor, Kristen likes in Nebraska, I like Notre Dame, everybody's good, you know, and, and, uh, and that's interesting. And then, so I think that that's, uh, that's something that I think, uh, you know, a lot of people forget about is lean into your differentiator. Okay. Um, Got it. So lot, so in my case, I'm a solopreneur, solo operator, I've got you know, a handful of clients. I, my business is, business is really where I want it to be. But when I was reading your book, yeah. I definitely saw how it would apply to, um, for sure, apply to like people who work in large offices, you, you know, to that accountant who's going maybe into a big four or into consulting or something like that. So, um, I, I mean, I was able to see how this applies to me, but what, what, what do you have for this audience of me, some of us who are beginning to build yeah. our businesses? We're not having those water cooler conversations. We're not needing to stand out when we're in a, you know, meeting room of 10 people. So right. how, like I wrote it down, let's see. How, um, how do the principles of what's your and and, and make differentiating yourself um, apply to people who are like me, who are, you know, I'm working in my bedroom with my, right. or my office and my kitchen table with yeah. my kids around. Um, how do I still use my and as a way to stand out? Yeah, well, Kristen nailed it right here. It makes you more personable, it makes you more human. Uh, you know, it relates to uh, coworkers in a larger setting, like you were saying, but in this group, it relates to clients. Yeah. Uh, you know, because you know who also has outside of work hobbies and interests? Clients. Clients too. So if you come across, you personally come across another person who teaches a youth choir or likes to sing or maybe has a military spouse or yeah. knows what an F-14 mm -hmm. is. Uh, F-18, F-18, F-18. Oh, F-18. <laughs> that's how old I am. I'm in F-14 days. I'm ancient. So, you know. not buy those anymore in America. See, that's how old I am. You didn't need to bring that up, Kate. Oh, no, but, uh, no, no, I'm just teasing. Uh, but, uh, but. If you, if you go along with those, you, you run into those people, now you have a sticky relationship there. You have something to actually relate to them about, and then you can better serve your client. You can actually be a trusted advisor instead of just calling yourself one. Okay. Because you can have those conversations that are deeper and, 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 uh, and more meaningful and create those. Uh, and like I said earlier, you differentiate yourself. You stand out. And, and that's really what it is because, you know, that, that business is talking to, who knows, five, seven different bookkeepers to maybe come do their work. And, well, why would I choose you? I mean, oh, because you're good at it? Well, you're all good at it. Everyone listening to this is good at it. If right. you weren't, you wouldn't be doing the job. Right. So, so you're good at it. So that's not your, your differentiator, isn't that? And I find personally that the more that you try to talk up how good you are. Now I don't believe you. Like I, I, I actually, I, I call it the trust rut where like people from the South that rent a car up North and get stuck in the snow. Like the first thing they do is gun it. Right. And then all you do is just sink deeper sink into deeper. the snow and then you gun it some more and, sink, and, and you're not actually moving forward or advancing. You're just falling into a rut. So the more you tell me about how, how many tax codes you've memorized or how great you are at whatever it is that you do. Uh, I, I already thought that when we started talking. So yeah. like, why are you keep, why do you keep, are you trying to convince yourself that you don't suck at this? Like, yeah. you know, so, you know, stop, uh, just be good enough as you are. And then, you know, lean into that differentiator. I got, I got, I got so many more. We got Janet, who's a Harley Davidson biker. See, hot mama. how cool is that, it. right? I love yeah. it. Um, we got uh, Zuzu is a self-proclaimed pianist, a baker, and a traveler. That um, works. 
We got Amanda who mentions her has mentioned her chickens to clients. So now they talk about chickens. Love it. You're See? like a little what is that called? A coop cooper or a chick? I don't know. Chicken coop lady. Anyway. But, but now you can have like real conversations about about things with your clients. That's awesome. Yeah. Uh, Mari Angelis, uh, you're late, you're, but you haven't missed anything. Tell us what your and is. It's your passion. Uh, you're a bookkeeper and something else. Um, we're glad you're here, so just keep listening. But John, so one of the things I'm thinking, I just had this thought like, oh, we could all give this book as like a Christmas gift. Like lots of times people want to do like a client yeah. gift or something. This would be a great one because they could apply it in their, like, Oh, yeah. You know, the construction yeah. company that you're still needs to apply this. This isn't just for like accounting, you know, professional services type. So, but right. now I'm thinking, what if you gave this to everyone who signs on? Like every new client engagement almost is like, it's a, you know, a very inexpensive, but like, whoa, this is kind of cool. And then yeah. that like even greases the wheels even more that, hey, we're going to talk about stuff other than just bookkeeping. Hey, you can tell me like, when you're going on vacation, don't just have the out of office pop up. Tell me like where you're going. Um, Cause that's cooler yeah. than, I don't know. Um, right. There's so, actually a real estate consultant that's doing that with all their onboarding. When they, when they have real estate agents uh, on board, she's giving them uh, a copy, copy of the book. She's yeah. And it just, it just creates this, this conversation that's more wholesome and more human. Uh, and, and it creates that relationship with you too, where, they don't expect you to be this perfect robot that uh, is, is, is not someone that I want to be friends with. Like you, yeah. you kind of create this, this mutual respect. So then as the uh, bookkeeper, you're alongside them on the journey, as opposed to sitting across the desk adversarial style. You're, I'm next to you. We're along this for, for the ride. Okay. So let's, let's get practical here. So I have, I'm a, you know, I might have, a 10 minute interaction with that prospective client it, sure. or, or I might even like, I might not even interact with them. Like they might be interacting with me and I'm not even knowing it. Like if I have a website or something like that. So how can, right. um, I could see how, you know, after a year long relationship, maybe some of this stuff comes out, but do you have any advice about how we can use our ands to differentiate ourselves like really quickly? And as you answer, yeah. keep also talk about this because in your book, I heard you say one, one time that sometimes it's like, if you're nervous about this, just get them talking about the, yeah. them instead of like, yeah. maybe it might, especially a lot of people in this group are, are nervous or they've been out of work for a while and they don't even like the thought of like talking to someone makes them like sick. Like literally, so <laughs> there's, there was a post a couple months ago where someone was like, I put on makeup and I'm sitting in my car and I'm supposed to go in, but I can't, you know, and we're like, go, go, right. you can do it. Um, but how right? do we, so if we have a, if we have a short interaction um, or yeah. we're nervous, talk about both of those situations. There's so much to unpack that on that. There? Yeah. Yeah. So much to unpack on that. First of all, if you're nervous uh, to go in because it's, I have to go in as this all knowing bookkeeper that's going to save this business. No, you're just Kate who likes to direct children's choirs and has a husband who's in the Navy. Like okay. you're a regular person hanging out. Like I'm here as a person talking to another person. Like, you know, it diffuses all that tension. It diffuses all that. And so on your website, in the about you section, there's absolutely no reason why you shouldn't have that. Why you shouldn't okay. have a picture of you directing your choir. Why you shouldn't make a mention of that. Like, okay. why not? Why would you not do that? Um, the, the other reason uh, on your LinkedIn profile, uh, bookkeeper and children's choir director. Okay. Why not? I mean, so you know, so like uh, Shannon could say uh, payroll, you know, nationwide payroll expert and certified firearms instructor. I mean, really, really, is she going to do that? So let's be honest. Like, so Shannon is someone I know. And but she also had other things as well there. Uh, oh, Shannon that, did? That okay. She, uh, that she, I'm, I'm losing she the said comment. also, but, or maybe not. Um, but yeah, I mean, a lot so of people. So let's be practical. In our LinkedIn profile, let's talk about that. How? Yeah. Is she going to say pay, payroll somewhere. expert? Okay. The volunteer. If you volunteer the bottom, someone, there's, right? there's a section there uh, okay. for that. Uh, I mean, you know, it's, it's, what do you, what are you active in? What do you like to do? Like show some of your personality. If, if I take your LinkedIn profile, color out your picture and scratch out your name uh -huh. and I put it next to Kristen's LinkedIn profile and Shannon's and Amanda's and Hey, Amanda and uh, Steve's like, what's the difference? 
you're all book good bookkeepers that are really good at it. You have some accounting experience. You have some education to back it up. You're all exactly the same. If I scratch out your picture and your name, what's the difference? But Shannon's saying sudden, she, she says she does have it on her LinkedIn. So way to there go. There we go. Then okay. Perfect. That's I great. guess I was a little, I was a little like, Why seriously? Not? <laughs> but we, um, because the thing is, is and, it, and that's what's really important is uh, the definition of professionalism okay. is, is, is so vague. And, it's, and it's, it's also hilarious because I don't know where you went to sixth grade, but they use the word professional in the definite, like you can't use the word in the definition of the word. <laughs> like I was kicked out of class for that at least twice. And so, uh, so it's like, uh, it, it's, it's other pertaining to a professional or a profession uh, or a profession. And it's like, well, what the hell does that even mean? And so I think it's a lot easier to define unprofessional because what was considered professional 100 years ago is insane right now. The largest bank in the UK, you couldn't live in a nicer home or a better neighborhood than your immediate supervisor. That was professional uh, just 100 years ago, not wow. that long. So, uh, so what's considered professional changes all the time. And so, uh, but what's unprofessional, I think, is everything's good until you inhibit someone else's ability to do their job. So you're getting your work done. Everyone else is able to get their work done. And then we're fine. You can talk about it all you want. You can share that all you want. And as a matter of fact, you should. And okay. I mean, yeah, I mean, it's, I mean, uh, Amanda's uh, slightly obsessed. That's an understatement of the century <laughs> uh, with backpacking. But, uh, you know, it's, it's right there in her bio. And then people that enjoy doing that, then they're all about it. And those people are your clients for life. No other bookkeeper can snake in and steal them away because they're better at doing a balance sheet. Like, shut up. Well, I'm better at reconciling. What? What are you talking about? <laughs> like, I love backpacking. Amanda loves backpacking. We're BFFs. Okay. Like, you know, and so, you know, how do you create those relationships that are sticky so clients can't get swiped? You know, they'll stay with you for, for through thick and thin, even if you charge a premium. The, the picture thing, you know, I remember like this concept of like headshot and I, uh, you know, didn't have a headshot <laughs> at all. I still, I don't know <laughs> that I still actually do, but I'm even just thinking about like how the evolution of that, that like professionals have wanted to have this picture for LinkedIn or whatever. And yeah. I mean, you don't want to be like a clown. I mean, I guess unless you're no. actually a clown. Well, but, unless you're actually a clown. But, <laughs> but like, could your... No, but... Um, Lots yeah. of those places, like LinkedIn has like the banner and then it has yeah. a small one, like maybe kind of put your hand in both pots there, yeah. you know, like the perfect, or get that picture of you, like if you're Amanda, like on the summit um, of something, you know, or on the bike or. Yeah, it, it's also not Facebook, you know, <laughs> right, yeah, 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 exactly. But it, it's not Facebook, so you definitely have to differentiate there. But okay. I mean, like examples uh, I've seen, there was a, a firm in Denver who their partner headshots, and they were huge, they were a 300 person firm. They had their partner headshots were them wearing a suit, professional attire, but they had the backpack on, or they had their mountain bike, or they were holding table saw or like tools, yeah. or they had a theater mask or whatever. And so it's a combination of both because that's why it's called what's your and. You're both of those things. You know, yeah. you're a bookkeeper and uh, you know, a, a choir director. <laughs> You're, you're not one or the other. It's not what you're or, you know, it's an and. And, and so it's, uh, you know, why not share those sides of you or uh, share the professional picture, but then also have, here's me directing a choir. Yeah. And, and then why not? I mean, it, it humanizes you and then it, it makes you more relatable as well. I mean, people look at us like these wizards that are just like weird and just stay in the dark and don't really, they come in after the fact. <laughs> Right, because you're always at month end. You're not yeah. during the month, you're at month end. Like it's already happened. You have to come in and count the bodies. <laughs> like it, that's how they look at us. Like these like trolls that stay in the dark and we shouldn't be that. We're, we're better than that and we know more than that and we can help more than that. Yeah. And so being relatable, being human, it makes you uh, just more effective at what you do. Y'all, there's a lot of people watching and we don't have, I know everyone's not shared their and, you'll get your name in the drawing for a book. So tell us about yourself. Now's the easy time to practice, practice on us. Like, 
say that yeah. weird thing that you're into and we'll be like, no, no, it's cool. And you're like, it's no, not no. weird at all. It's and and weird. if you want to be on my podcast, absolutely reach out, please. Cause awesome. Amanda's coming up soon. You're coming up soon. Uh, had tons of people, everyone from making kombucha to played minor league baseball for a couple of years and everything wow. in between. Yeah. Uh, I was thinking of a, a part in the book that talked, um, this is, I think really relevant. Um, I don't know if it's an advice, but just a, a comment that you said that we need, a Gallup poll says we need six hours of social time a day. And I mean, I, I certainly don't get that, except with my family, then I get way more than six hours. <laughs> but that's kind of where I am in life right now. But just this idea yeah. of if that, if that really does play into my mental health and my ability to just, you know, stay sharp and, and feel human and feel like getting out of bed, like figuring out how to solve this problem of like, how, how do I, as a solo operator who's in my house at my little desk with my, you know, laptop, yeah. all, whenever I'm working, how do I, this is the best way to like form those connections. And so if you're in those like social media groups or in networking groups or in mom's book club groups, like those are all ands that then can naturally kind of, I'm also, a, I'm also a bookkeeper too. And just that kind of flowing yeah. back and forth to where it's not like, I don't want to just get all my socializing that I can get, even if I can't hit my six hours um, a day. Right. Um, it's certainly a lot harder, you know, as a solopreneur uh, yeah. to, to do that. But if some of that socializing was with clients where some of that conversation isn't all work all the time, and if you charge by the hour, then maybe don't charge for that part. Yeah. And let them oh. know, like, I'm not charging you for this. This is just me and you talking like normal people. You right. know, and, and, uh, and I think it's also important, there was a study at Northwestern University uh, that shows that if you separate your work life from your quote unquote real life, you're, you're more prone to, to, or less prone to make better moral decisions. Because you'll think, well, if I make a shady move over here in work, that doesn't make me a bad parent or a bad friend. But it does. I mean, you're a shady person. It doesn't matter. Right. So like the more you lower that wall and blend these, then the better you, you'll be at being a professional. Okay. Um, I'm looking at my questions here. Y'all, y'all, if any of y'all have actual for yeah, questions. I can please, see the questions. Please so please jump yeah. in. Um, share your and share, share a question. Um, yeah, I, I just, I really like, like this book. Um, just so y'all know, I, I did, I read, I read the whole thing. I actually live tweeted it if y'all want to follow me on Twitter. Um, but, and you can go back and look at it, but I, I got a lot out of it. Um, it well, was, you. it was great so for much. someone, um, you know, who I was out of the workforce for a while. I've been solely busy, building my business over the last couple of years, but just, just kind of remembering what it's like to be a professional. It was being, it, it was encouraging to hear, you know, like, just great tips on, on how to interact. And so I think anyone who is like s scared to like put themselves out there, there's a lot of like practical tips about how do we interact with people? How do we listen? Like Steve Chase mentioned, like sometimes just listening is like the best thing you can do. And if you just yeah. start that conversation, people love talking about themselves. Um, and they'll, then they'll probably ask you some questions too. And it's, it's just not, it made it not, I mean, I don't have, I'm not a, I don't have a trouble with the, this uh, networking, I'm kind of an extrovert, but I could see, I was thinking about a lot of people in the group about how they could be encouraged to just take that deep breath, thrust out that hand and um, just get going and you'll meet some jerks and that's okay. But don't let yeah. the jerk ruin your life because most people are not and there'll be the next a nice person right next to them that you can yeah. let somebody in a different Facebook group to be their bookkeeper. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> exactly. You do you want to work with them? Um, exactly. No, and, and it's and it's also too just uh you know that's such a great point of just you know it it also makes you relatable and it makes you referable. So if you're in a mom's group um, yeah. and you're out there doing your and doing these hobbies and passions, those people have businesses. They know business owners. They know people that need bookkeeping. So you're getting business from doing what you love to do anyway, uh, on accident. Plus mm -hmm. if, if you, if you come across someone else who loves singing and maybe they're in a, a choir or a singing group or something like that, and then you go and, uh, you know, they, they have friends that need bookkeeping or they have friends that need something. So then you become, you, you niche in a, in a way you, there, there's a Josh Lance 
who was on the podcast, he, he has a, a accounting firm out of Chicago and he uh, loves making wine at home. And so uh, he actually focused his uh, accounting business on microbrews. So he, he hangs out with the coolest people he knows every day. <laughs> If they pay him and pay him in alcohol. <laughs> Either, yeah, that, and he knows all the words. So they think yeah. he's awesome. Mm -hmm. And, you know, and so it, it's just, you're, you get to hang out with people that you actually jive with people that you actually get people that you can actually serve better. Mm -hmm. And it just, it just makes for a better work experience. Even if you don't have a ton of colleagues in a giant office, mm -hmm. you have clients. Um. I'm looking at the back, y'all. So this is one thing that is you know, it's cool for us. Most of there's there's nine tips at the back. Nine is it nine or ten? Yeah, Actually, nine. nine yeah, um, yeah. So some of these don't necessarily directly apply to us, but they would for sure apply to your. You know, if you've got a client of like ten employees in an office, like something like that, they could implement some of these. But um, there's just some advice about like making business lunches, um, how to make meetings interesting. Like I could see you brainstorming an idea of like, you know, maybe the opening email you send all your clients each month or something is like, and when we have our debrief, like everyone, we're going to share, I'm going to ask every, all yeah. the clients, your blah, 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 your favorite ice cream or, or your favorite football team or what, whatever. And you could, and if it's the Huskers, know. it's still wrong. It, no, yeah. I'm teasing. I'm joking. <laughs> But there's, there's practical stuff. He talks about something we can do with our email signatures. That's, yeah, that's super that's easy. Good. Super, easy. Everyone can do that here. Yeah. So like you can read this and like fold the pages down. And I'm, I know that it, you would have at least, you know, two handfuls worth of like, oh, I can do that. Oh, I can do that. Or you know, I, I would suggest if you read this, have two, two buckets. One is what you can do. And then one is how you can like use this to support your clients because then you'll be a hero because a lot of us especially are serving like small clients and they're yeah. sort of they're figuring out business as they go too and they don't know what they don't know you know it's hard work being a boss and being a good colleague and then also making money and all this stuff and so if you tell them like hey pass this book out and do this toastmasters thing like he has a toastmasters idea hey i read this book and i i thought of your company look and send him a picture of the quote and along with the book or something. Um, so that's two ways you can think of it to like, to have this book help, help you, the listener right now listening to this. Um, yeah, so. and I, I know Kristen, but thanks for laughing. That was funny. <laughs> like, you know, it's just, that's, uh, that's funny. Uh, but, uh, but no, it, it's, it's very relatable. And, and I wrote it in a way that's, that's really readable. The, the best compliment I've gotten is from people that have said, I'm not a reader. And I just read the whole book in one, like I just, and it, it's long enough to where, you know, you get enough tips and it's 200 pages, but it's also in micro chapters. So you feel exactly. like you're, you're just reading bite-sized pieces at a time. There's, There's not giant words in there. It's very conversational. It's, it's a book that you enjoy reading. Um, I hope uh, that's how I wrote it anyway. Yeah. Well, you went to Notre Dame, so you didn't, you didn't learn too many big words. Oh, zing! I see. All right, Kristen, you and me against her. All right. Um, <laughs> there we go. Yeah. So I think the like longest chapter is like four maybe pages, four pages or something. Maybe. Yeah. yeah, um, yeah it's, three or four pages. Yeah. It's a great um, yeah. handbook almost. I mean, it's not like that. It's you could almost pick yeah, it up at almost any point. So. Um, That's what I should have called it. I, I, I need to redo the cover. Like, <laughs> not yet, not yet. No, All right, no. well, John, um, I'm not seeing any more questions. Y'all, we're going to get, I'm going to ask John to tell us how we can get in touch with him. But for now, tell us your and. Let us hear that weird thing. That's really awesome. Do it right now. John, how right. can folks yeah. find you? How can we follow you? I know you put out, you know, just, I mean, you have your podcast. Tell us about how do we find that. But um, sure. just like on LinkedIn, I've enjoyed like, you just have a lot of good like organizational behavior kind of content, which even bookkeepers need to know about that stuff. Well, thank you so much. Yeah. It's uh, just what's your and.com. I make it okay. super easy. The podcast is there. Uh, the book is there. Uh, it's also in the middle of my website. So you can see some videos. I do some music vid video parodies uh, that are pretty awesome. Um, <laughs> so you have uh, your own comedy stuff there? Like some funny oh, stuff? Oh, yeah, for sure. Okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. And uh, yeah, there's a One Direction parody. Uh, and then there's, uh, I just redid uh, <laughs> Katy Perry's Firework. It's uh, called Manager. So it's, uh, yeah, it's, uh, you'll do what I say because I have an MBA. And, um, uh, you know, and it's just, uh, 
it's basically if Michael Scott was a mean person instead of just dumb. Instead of a so nice like, dumb person. Yeah, awesome. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, uh, but yeah, but what's your end.com. It's all there. And if you want to be on the podcast, please reach out. It'd be so fun to share your and with everybody. And, and it, basically my research shows that 92% of people have these outside work interests. So 92% of professionals. So that means that if you have these outside interests, you're not alone and you're not the oddball. You're part of the norm. It's not yeah. even close. You're actually the stereotypical bookkeeper. The stereotypical bookkeeper is someone that has other interests outside of work. Yeah. So it's time that we start acting like that's the norm. And if you're part of the 8% and what lights you up is bookkeeping, well, good for you. That's fine too. <laughs> but it's 100% fine for the other people to have these other interests. All right. All right. Um, yeah, I want I want to see I want to see uh, Shannon on your interview with her uh, with her, you know the, the the photo that goes with the the podcast with the big. Oh, I've had people arm. on that are hunters. Uh, <laughs> I've had people on that uh, I mean play Australian rules football. I've had on people. It's that so many. It's like a really go good hiking. podcast, y'all. It's kind of a good like um, just a like a casual um, you know some of the podcasts I listen to are like more more technical, and this is just sort of like a relax and breathe type of a podcast you can listen to it while you're doing anything um it's really interesting and encouraging it's like it's like a feel good like you don't listen to his podcast and like hate the world like you do when you listen to some podcasts like every right. well all, thank you yeah this is all terrible like no this is all these are all good like happy stories it's going to make you you're going to get advice about how people are using their end and because you always make them apply it to their work yeah. you know like how yeah, do you yeah. use this in work and so there's, yeah. good, there's good tips for that. So, No, well, right. I appreciate it. Thank you so much. That's I'm, awesome. I'm pr happy for you for getting this book out there. I know that was a great uh, feat, and um, yeah. I hope the launch goes well, y'all. He's a, a, f a friend of lots of people in this group. I really encourage y'all to get this. Um, it's, a, it's good, and I think that, like, I, yeah, I, for those of y'all who are listening now, great client gift, folks. Great client gift. Um, it's well, appropriate thank you for so any, much, any business. It's, appro it's appropriate. So. And actually, I'm doing for the pre-orders, if you pre-order the book and then uh, send me the receipt, I'm doing a buy one, give one. Okay. So anybody in the group that wants to, uh, you, you pre-order the book, you send me the receipt, you send me, there's a little form there on the What's Your Ant page. And then you just send me who you, want, who you want to send a digital version to, and I'll send a free digital version to them. So What's the deadline for the, what's considered a pre-order? Yeah, so How long uh, do they have? next Sunday. So it'll be like uh, a week after the book launches on Tuesday. So Okay, yeah. cool. I'll be sure so, to remind folks that, um, remind folks of, of that throughout next week too. Like get your extra copy. Um, yeah. Hey, I really appreciate it. Um, I'll let no, you go. We've awesome. had a lot of good listeners and I want to, you know, respect everybody's time. Thank you so much, John. I know you've got a lot more. A book promo to do um, and we'll keep in touch and we'll bring you back if we have any more questions about you know if we need if we need that encouragement um, again that you've been able to give today so well, thanks so thank much. you so much this is awesome I love it and everybody in here please reach out if I can help with anything else thanks all right bye all right see ya see ya bookkeeping side hustlers I'll do the drawing for the gifts tomorrow morning all right so you can still watch it for the next 24 hours here on Facebook and comment all right bye <laughs>